So now, our next talk, um, which it's not Mark who is with me here, as was uh, said, but it's Christine. Hi, Christine. Hi. Christine, is, she's a colleague of Mark who uh, just uh, stepped in, for example, uh, within five minutes. Yeah, approximately five minutes time. Um, so she's working together with Mark um, uh, in and researching yeah, user research and it's, this talk is about usability barriers in privacy enhancing technologies and how we can overcome them. So I'm very interested myself uh, about that because this gap between secure and uh, comfortable or usable, uh, that's, yeah, usability is a big topic. Um, and I already have my pencil for taking notes already. You can also send us questions if you want via Twitter or Mastodon using the hashtags PW20 or PW20 online, or you can use the form on the website there you can ask questions anonymously. And now, Christine, the stage is yours. Already? Okay, well, great. So. Um, thanks, Claudia, for the moderation and for the announcement. I'm very happy to be here, uh, well, just spontaneously instead of my colleague. Uh, at the end, I would be really happy about a lot of questions, so ask questions if you have any. Um, so, as was said, we're, what I want to talk about is, so how do we uh, try to put, bring user research and user design together with privacy? Um, so, uh, one slide further. So, okay, so our like starting point is, um, so we, we're thinking about the privacy paradox. So despite people are care for their private data and are, and are afraid of losing it, um, on the other hand, um, they don't really um, do about, and, and they are rather, they, they don't do about a, a lot of things to actually secure them. Um, so they don't think about what happens when they post uh, personal stuff on social media, or what actually happens when you're doing online shopping, or what actually what it actually means to use your smartphone, um, which data is sent, etc. And um, what and how you can work against this is, for example, doing user interface or user research or user testing. So those are two methods to try to help us do qualitative methods, like you really talk to users. So where are the problems? Where are myth what is what what leads to misunderstandings, or why do these problems even arise when you can? Um, share data so easily and why you should care about that and then you test so like systems which already exist and so and you can check how you could increase privacy or security so that users actually also feel more safe uh, when they're using it or feel safer when they're using it so well what a good example from real life is um, design versus user research. So if you look at, okay, yeah, um, I have the best design, I did a great thing that's, and people will really love it and use it as it was intended. And as I thought they will use it versus what actually happens in reality and what people will actually do. So, and this is what user research is about. And so to just to try to understand users and the usage and why and how they use stuff. As you can see here, you see on the left side is the way, which also the, the track, which was designed to be used. And on the right side, you see the track, which is actually used. Um, yeah. So, um, short nip. Um, a good method is um, research center design, which is an ISO certified process. Um, if we can break that down into four steps, more or less. So at the beginning, you either have an idea for a product or you look at a product which already exists, but you, sorry, uh, want to enhance. 
and then you go to the second one, second step about UCD methods. So there's a lot of methods in which it, it depends on which phase of the product you are or whether the product already exists. So for example, interviews, user tests, um, there's a persona method, cultural probing kits, which you can use um, to get user feedback. Um, and they're immediately uh, put into development and so integrated into development to enhance the product. And if it happened, if it works on the first time, it's great. If not, you just do it iteratively until you are uh, at the point where the output is what you wanted. So, well, and what is, what, what's the use of user feedback? So users should actually like to use the product. They should feel secure when they use it. Um, and they should actually understand what they do when they use it with a good user experience. Uh, if you, if you do that regularly and systematically integrate this in your product development process, um, you can quickly identify procedures or potential which lead to higher acceptance rates or to less barriers in usability and so also in the during the use of the product. And um, very important is that by doing so, you can uh, stop uh, wrong developments, which leads to lower costs as well. So as I said before, um, and there are a lot of possibilities, so it depends on who are my users actually, what's my product. Um, I brought three examples with me here, which are pretty well known. For example, like, yeah, interviews, so it could be like with a group or with a single person, depends. Uh, in my experience, groups with, if you have a group, uh, you get some kind of group experience and group dynamics which otherwise you would and which develops the feedback which you otherwise couldn't get and it's pretty good to see that those who will use the product in the future um, what they actually imagine how they want to use it and this qualitative insight is a develop is in the develop is very important and, and uh, good for development if you don't have time um, for example so you don't have time for group interviews like now you have COVID, you can't have like 10 people in a room. Of course, you can do all of this online, which has, which is a positive thing about online services. You can, so you can collect more data. You can get more views of users in a shorter period of time. Um, so you can, then you can do some statistics about it and check about features. So what do you like? What don't you like? What should stay? What should go? Or you can also check on prototypes if you have a prototype in your development. Um, but if you have a prototype, whatever, like it's a click prototype or just a mock prototype or just a paper pencil prototype, you can already uh, test those with users so and check do they feel secure when they use it or safe when they use it. Uh, what do you have to change? Basically, what is totally bad, what is good? So you have the first opportunities and the most used uh, to uh, to make a product rather secure and especially to give users the feeling that they can feel secure when they use it. So, and from this you, well, deduce optimization potential. So where do you have to redesign something? Also get some quick wins or something you can do very quickly and with uh, very little effort, but get a huge effort comparably. For example, so like put that button somewhere else would be a totally easy example. You can add functions which are missing, but you can also do like uh, long-term developments or start, which may be a bit more uh, cost extensive, but whatever. So still you can do it. And you also get f stuff, What you get feedback about what you definitely shouldn't change. So what, feed what your users really love and definitely want to keep. Um, clearly all of us know that uh, from 
a private experience of of a lot of products you there are things you definitely don't want to change and so these projects usually uh first they look at the product so in which phase of the product is it is it new is it uh, just an idea is it already done then you look at the target users uh then you then uh, decide on the method uh take some time to implement the testing method and then uh, just check the results and depending on what what is your goal with the product so uh, very use a very standard example here what can use your user research can do for example here you see your tv control a remote control for a tv and usually you see you know the quest the, the the buttons you have to actually push so put it on put it off volume on volume down and and sometimes menu and usually you don't need all the other 20 buttons so if you ask if you would have asked users beforehand most likely um users it would have looked much easier so and some people actually really did this example and i suppose you know this as well and then you get um, a useful remote control for your tv so uh, what actually do what do you really need it's smaller it's more compact so development uh, is uh, more is less expensive but users are also happier because they are not overloaded with functions so um, what we want to say with that uh, as a summary is you should also have a look at don't uh, concentrate on the features of the product but check on the tasks that the product should do so do actually do users actually know what your what the tasks are so not just think about fancy features because um, most most of the time as you can see with the remote control uh, they are rather useless and or let's say users just don't use them so at the end Mm. We're currently trying in one project, in one research project, about user acceptancy. We're also trying to see, um, uh, and uh, so we're in this research project. We're trying to, to tackle this topic from a scientific perspective and not just from a marketing perspective um, about this whole usability privacy except user acceptance so okay so this is the person who should have actually talked today thanks for your um attention and thanks well so okay that was a quick talk that was great. Uh, you have uh, mentioned uh, quite a few very interesting things. And uh, we have already collected uh, a number of questions that are uh, coming in. So uh, let's look at it. I, I, I have to scroll in my other window first. So the first question we got. What, what's a good approach? Uh, what are good methods uh, to develop uh, user experience uh, or develop with a good user experience in mind? Um, so the first thing really is uh, to start early. Uh, so go to your colleague, uh, tell them what you're planning, go to your neighbor. Um, that's, that's, that's my approach. And so you have to plan a bit what what kind of feedback you actually want to get um so you can always do an interview um that might be very specific uh, to that user and the task that they need to perform so i know uh from from test readers uh from uh, publishing books um uh you have to select people from the target audience but uh, maybe other people that might not be part of the target audience, but uh, uh, might bring something something special to the table. Um, so 
So do you mean like pe people who might not be using it? Well, people who might not use it that often or only accidentally use it. So uh, what? So their particular needs. So we haven't done that really so far, but uh, that sounds like a good plan to to get uh, fresh feedback, uh, different feedback. Okay, the next question. So th this is a bit hard. Which software is the most user friendly for PGP mail? And there's a hint. Uh, the software name I didn't understand uh, doesn't is lacking a lot of features. So that's lacking there, right, as well. That's a very good question. Thank you. I, I can't answer that. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, but this is, in fact, uh, one of our biggest usability problems uh, in the field of privacy and data protection, that, uh, that this is really hard to do. Yeah, that's true. Um, do you have? Uh, a good hint, uh, a pointer, um, how people can bridge the time until we have a good solution? No, I'm sorry. Or a good tip, how, how you can have uh, solutions that are not that great uh, explained well to you? <laughs> I'll usually try to use the forums uh, how other people have uh, tried to solve it, and you you, you can see that that some problems uh, occur to many people, and and sometimes somebody uh, has posted something to a forum uh, with a solution to that particular problem. So that's something we all have to work on. That we 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 have to use uh, things that that are not. Uh, that great. Um, so so of, often things either look fancy or they look quote unquote secure. And uh, when they look secure, you know what I mean. How, how, how do you deal with that? <laughs> well, I, I have a very torn relationship to that. I'm trying, but sometimes um, I, 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 I fall back into uh, the, the convenience corner um, and simply do what's quick and easy. Um, I, I, I need a lot of time to, to get my head into these secure tools. And I'm, I'm usually just a regular PC user. And so, so if, 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 if it has to happen quickly, I, I pick the convenience solution, but I think that's that's uh, something that, that's a trap we all fall into when if we're under stress, um, we're annoyed by something, um, or or we're just overwhelmed. Uh, maybe on a better day, we 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 might have been able to deal with it. Uh, no, not today. Not today. I can't do it. Yeah, I know. That's that's uh, sad. Um, is there research about this? about this behavior of uh, users having their blinders on and uh, not today, this is too complicated. Like, uh, um, how, yeah, this overload, how, how, how to deal with that? Yeah, um, there's a lot of research. I can't quote anything right now, but I'm sorry. So, I'm, I'm I'm just asking a couple of questions directly. Uh, what I'm interested in. So I have been part of a couple of projects uh, with with the longer research uh, phase, more more on the project management side and not the implementation. So I I again have a different view on that as well. So here's another question. So, which password managers and backup solutions can you recommend? Uh, 
so we're using P suite for business or G suite, sorry, G suite for business. But so that's the thing where we get into the area uh, where Google and Facebook, but particularly Google, um, who have invested a lot into usability. Um, um, it's it's a feeling of security. Um, we, we're paying for G Suite. Um, it's it's not the, the free solution. So it it. It, it it at least feels a bit safer. Um, so in this entire research area, do 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 you feel do, do you know how much money is is uh, being spent on 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 how users use the services? Can can you repeat the question? Um, just speaking about Google, Google. Um, Google is investing a lot into this kind of research. Uh, do you have any more information on that? Um, how how others do that, or or in terms of numbers? No, I don't have any numbers. So another question. Uh, so so UCP is living. It, it works by by getting getting a lot of uh, uh, data about the behavior of users, and that's not necessarily privacy friendly. How 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 do you deal with uh, contradiction? So the way I understand it, um, so UCB tries to deal or try to tries to improve uh, the user experience by analyzing user behavior data. So we 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 had uh, focus groups and individual interviews, and uh, people knew that they they are part uh, or the subject of some research. Uh, so uh, so when we do research, we always let people know uh, that they're part of a research uh, of some research of a study. Um, we might not tell them. Um, we, we, we definitely need written consent uh, for, for collecting and then processing uh, that data. And what would you, what you, would you recommend to uh, individual developers or companies um, how, how, they, how, how should they should approach a new project if, if they want to uh, start thinking about user experience in the, in the very beginning? So, uh, and so, you you should definitely plan uh, on certain milestones and cornerstones uh, to to have a proper test, a proper user experience test, um, uh, at least one. Cool, uh, Christina, I have one more question. Um, are you available for a Pausengespräch for for a chat in the break room? Um, yeah. So so uh, can you change uh, to the Pausenraum to the break room after this talk? Uh, because there's a couple people who might want to ask a couple more question. Let's see. Uh, will you tell me how I can get there? Yeah, <laughs> we'll do that uh, right after this. Very good. Um, let me look at the chat uh, if there's further questions. Christina, um, is there something that you would like uh, to let people know to have them take away from, from this talk for their next project? Uh, like a rule of thumb. Uh, in general, if, if, if you're developing products, um, Think of the users and ask the users pretty much irrespectively of how, but but ask, go ask them. Uh, yeah, that, that sounds like a very good thing. And it's simple. <laughs> Actually, yeah, now that you say it. Great. 
So there's no further questions here. Uh, so let's uh, head over to the break room. Um, thank you very much for the very quick uh, stepping in uh, to give this talk. Uh, thank you very much for your insights. Uh, it was very interesting. And I hope that user centers design uh, will get another push. <laughs>